talk about some of the work we've been doing uh, with, with the DAO and the tissue measurement uh, pre Vortex and then also what we're doing in uh, Vortex 2, both last year and uh, what we both do this year. Uh, the big goal is trying to find out what the winds are doing at the lowest levels. Is point. Um, and uh, I'll go through the different kind of instruments and kind of data that we actually have, but the big problem is we have data from kind of infinity and tornadoes down to maybe 18 meters, maybe 20 meters, 30 meters, um, but we don't know what's happening near the ground. Now we know what's happening right at the ground, of course, there's zero wind right at toll height, um, but how do you connect the dots? Uh, and there's some theory that shows you might have enough stronger winds uh, below the lowest levels we're measuring with radar. Um, the screen with this stuff. Um, so uh, what we've been relegated to doing is the Fujita scale. And uh, the problem, of course, is that, as, as you just saw, most of these tornadoes are not hitting buildings or engineer buildings or things which you can really use to rate well. Um, if you really, really want to focus on wind speed. Um, so we're just in inferring it all from these damage surveys. And great efforts have been made, I'd say it's almost heroic efforts to try to do this, um, but it's a big struggle, as you saw. Um, and one of the biggest problems uh, that I see in terms of trying to get um, data from the Fujita scale or enhanced Fujita scale to scientific use is that it's an integrated measurement. Tornado passes over an area and it's you know, blowing from one direction at a lower speed, then it's blowing at a higher speed, then if you're in the eye, it drops down, then it's blowing from the opposite direction at a big speed, then it drops down, and all of that gets smooshed together into one number, your EF rated, right? Um, and what does that tell me about the vortex structure? If I'm trying to understand it, I want to know how big it is, how strong the winds are, how they're varying, are there multiple vortices in there? Kind of hard to get that from EF2. Right? Um, so it's an integrated measurement, and also um, it's kind of crude. Uh, basically, the wind speeds um, aren't well known. These damage indicators um, have gotten great, I think, with the EF scale, but those numbers that are associated with them, um, you know, those of you old enough to remember, know they drop a lot um, from the, with the Fujita scale ones, and they went from kind of, I think, kind of crude guesses, really, that Fujita did 30 years ago, um, to better guesses, but still kind of crude. You know, we just spent a couple days discussing, you know, how much does it really take to knock over a tree? What does it really take to lift the roof? It depends on the kind of roof. Those numbers are kind of crude. Um, so it's difficult to do any kind of precise science with them. So in order to actually get wind measurements, um, we've been using different kinds of tools. Now one are radars, and we have uh, DAOs, uh, and recently we've been having more radars come in there. Texas Tech has some new radars with even finer beams than the DAOs. They can get up close to uh, tornadoes. University of Massachusetts has one with a, a millimeter wave ra radar that has a very, very fine beam. And the idea is to try to get data close to the ground, really fine scale data. Um, the rapid scan Dow has been out for several years trying to get very fast data in some of these storms because um, the tornadoes are evolving very quickly. So we have remote sensing techniques to try to measure what the winds are there. Um, and they're not perfect, but it's better than just having a damage indicator there. Um, the rapid scan is basically a multi-beam system, um, so we look, we're basically instead of raking through the sky with one beam like a traditional radar does, we rake through several beams at once, so that's the concept there. And so in a tornado, a couple, you get a whole bunch of different slices instead of just one, is the idea. And these are the kind of pictures you've seen. If you, these are the kind of things that are on the web, where we see a Doppler velocity couplet, and then we see that you know there's the hook echo from the tornado, and there's the tornado debris cloud in the center. Um, that's Attica or Harper tornado from 2004. This is the Spencer tornado, this is the Harper tornado, and we can see the Doppler couplets and the complications in those wind flows. There's a lot of detail in these wind flows, which again is not going to show up when you have a one number rating of, of a tornado. For example, this is a tornado. There's the uh, quote unquote eye, but it's not really the eye. It's a faux eye. Inside there is the real debris cloud of a tornado. There's some strong winds there, and then it gets weaker and actually even stronger out there. The strongest winds in this tornado were outside the tornado um, in this mesocyclone scale uh, circulation. That's 